Dread gnawed at him. Conflict was his kryptonite, yet a showdown loomed. Years of peaceful coexistence in this neighborhood were about to be shattered by his own hand. This wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision. He'd wrestled with it for a while, aware of the potential ripple effects. His actions wouldn't just raise his own eyebrows, but those of his entire street. Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. Decades of tranquility in Osceola County had lulled Oliver Lynch, a spry 79-year-old retiree, into a blissful routine. Unlike the bustling tourist hubs of Florida, Osceola offered a haven for retirees like him, a place where life moved at a leisurely pace. Yet, even the quietest corners can be jolted by the unexpected. Oliver had just returned from a rejuvenating retreat at his cabin, feeling years younger after a break from daily worries. Pulling into his driveway, however, a wave of unease washed over him. The familiar concrete path leading from the street to his house was now marred by a jarring sight, cinder blocks. He barely squeezed his car between them, his heart sinking with each intrusive block. Back inside his haven, a single question burned in his mind. Who dared disrupt his peaceful existence? He wouldn't rest until he had an answer. A man of action, Oliver charged outside, intent on removing the unwelcome obstruction himself. But after a series of futile shoves and heaves, it became clear the cinder blocks weren't budging. Were they cemented in? And why would anyone do this? A chilling thought crept into his mind. The vacant lot next door, a source of local ghost stories and rumored burials, had finally been purchased. Perhaps the new owner, eager to establish property lines, had placed the blocks, but why right in the middle of his driveway? Oliver, clueless about the buyer's identity, felt a surge of helplessness. How would he even contact them? Then, a glimmer of hope. As days turned into weeks, the empty lot transformed. Construction workers swarmed the site, heavy machinery rumbled into place. The answer, Oliver realized, might be right there. Surely someone amidst the flurry of activity could point him towards the elusive owner. Heaving himself over the cinder blocks, Oliver approached the bustling construction site next door. He hoped a quick conversation with the foreman, the likely meddler, would clear things up. After some explanation, the foreman coughed up the owner's phone number. Little did Oliver know, this wouldn't be a simple fix. Back home, Oliver's fingers trembled as he typed the number. Each ring echoed his growing unease. Confrontation wasn't his forte. Years of peace had lulled him into a comfort zone far removed from arguments. Finally, the call connected. Oliver stammered out his complaint, expecting a reasonable discussion. But the answer that came back was a belligerent claim. The property line ended exactly where the cinder blocks sat, and they weren't going anywhere. A surge of anger, a feeling long dormant, bubbled within Oliver. He was caught off guard by the neighbor's hostility. What could he even say? Decades of pouring his own sweat into the driveway, a quarter century of peaceful use, all seemingly dismissed with a phone slam. Oliver knew inaction wasn't an option. He had to prove his ownership, and fast. A frantic search through his files commenced, no easy feat considering the purchase happened over two decades ago. He sifted through countless boxes, hope dwindling with each one. Then, a glimmer, the one he'd been searching for, the property records, his concrete proof. But had the delay cost him his rightful claim? A triumphant grin spread across Oliver's face as he reviewed the property records. The black and white on paper confirmed his gut feeling. He had a clear right to two 12-foot wide driveways. A trip to the Osceola County offices solidified his confidence. The records were accurate, but there was a new thorn in his side. We can't force your neighbor to remove the blocks, the county official explained, leaving Oliver with two unwelcome options. Hire a surveyor to settle the dispute formally or take his neighbor to court. Neither prospect was appealing, he attempted another phone call to his neighbor, but it went unanswered. Frustration gnawed at Oliver. He needed a way to make his neighbor take notice, something impossible to ignore. An idea sparked. Oliver contacted WFTV, his local television station, and recounted the ordeal. 
Intrigued, the station agreed to feature the story. As the news crew arrived, Oliver, determined to hold his ground, knew this was the right course of action. His neighbor had to be held accountable, right? After all, the facts were clear. I just don't have the energy for a fight, Oliver confided to the reporter. But I can't stand by and let someone bully me. What's the point of those few extra feet of concrete anyway? Public opinion became Oliver's unlikely weapon. The WFTV story struck a chord, painting him as a victim of neighborly bullying. Soon, the whole town was buzzing about the situation, and Oliver found himself at the center of sympathetic conversations. However, despite the groundswell of support, there were no calls from his neighbor. Then, a week after the news segment aired, Oliver's doorbell rang. His neighbor stood there, and bracing for another confrontation, Oliver watched with a mix of apprehension and curiosity as the man approached. Every step his neighbor took quickened Oliver's pulse. Would there be yelling? Threats? Oliver steeled himself for a fight. Surprisingly, the neighbor simply wanted to talk. He requested to see the property records, claiming he had no idea the disputed area belonged to Oliver and never meant to cause such a scene. Apparently, a genuine misunderstanding fueled the entire conflict. Oliver, though justified in holding a grudge, opted for a more peaceful resolution. After all, they were neighbors, and endless animosity wouldn't benefit either of them. He politely asked the neighbor to remove the cinder blocks, to which the man readily agreed. The reason for the sudden change of heart remained a mystery. In a previous encounter, Oliver had discovered the neighbor was a minister, a fact that clashed dramatically with his recent behavior. Oliver couldn't resist a veiled jab during his WFTV interview, calling the situation unchristian-like. Perhaps, as Oliver mused, after much prayer, the man saw the light and realized he wasn't being fair. Whether divine intervention or a simple desire to avoid further conflict, the outcome remained the same. Peace was restored on Oliver's driveway. Relief washed over Oliver, a testament to the power of civil discourse. Neighborly disputes, however, don't always follow such a harmonious path. Consider a recent kerfuffle in Washington. A resident painted his house a flamboyant pastel purple, much to the dismay of his neighbors. Fearing plummeting property values, they launched a petition, their pleas falling on deaf ears. The neighbor directly beside the purple abode decided on a unique form of revenge. His property wasn't adjacent, but his field bordered the offending house. With a lawnmower as his weapon, he crafted a secret message visible only from above. A satellite image on Google Maps would be the sole witness. This subtle jab offered a unique perspective on neighborly conflict resolution. Of course, legal recourse is always an option. Neighborhood disputes are an inevitable part of life. We can't choose our neighbors, and getting along with everyone is a utopian dream. Luckily, most U.S. states have laws addressing common issues like trees, fences, and boundaries. If you find yourself in a pickle, a quick search online or a visit to your local government office can shed light on relevant statutes or court decisions.